first half points. What did they have, 89 in the first half? Yes, franchise record for most points allowed in a half. Now, think about that. The Sacramento Kings set a franchise record for the most points they've allowed in a half, 89. Yes. Yeah. And you think about all the years the Kings have had terrible teams. Think yeah. about the time that, what was it, 40-4 to four against the Lakers? Mm-hmm. Like, years ago. All the horrible defensive teams and all the horrible teams they've had. Last night, they gave up a franchise record. This is after... You know, hiring a defensive coach, uh, bringing in, you know, okay, we, 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 Davion second year, he'll help Keegan, you know, better defense, blah, blah, blah. The biggest worry, you know, this, it's so tough when you're doing this because people don't want to wake up and feel depressed. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to kind of walk the line for no preseason. And I've learned through the years, it's like I have to temper what I say because it makes people miserable, and I don't want to do that. So you try to hint, like, well, it's just preseason. Remember, they were 4-0 last year. Right. And then we talked about, okay, free throw shooting, and that's going to be a big thing. But the number one thing was, remember, they faced one big guy. It was Anthony Davis in the preseason. He had a double-double in, like, eight minutes. Where's their defense going to come from? This is This is – don't don't be fooled by the 89.8 points. You look at our defensive teams last year. I'm, I'm not going to look at this year because of three games, but the Celtics, defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, plenty of other guys. Dallas Mavericks, they have Luka, who's a sieve, but they've surrounded him with guys that not only can defend but show effort. They have a wonderful team, whereas the Celtics have the best individual defender, at least they did last year. You could argue uh, the Mavs. They have, I think, the best team defense. Golden State. They're anchored by Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins is a very underrated defender, not so much anymore, but Miami. You've got Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and a bunch of guys on that team that if you don't play defense, you're going to sit. You go down and down and down and down the line. You look at Sacramento Kings. Now listen, there's one thing you don't ever want to do, and you never want to question a player's heart unless you know you're right. There's just lines you don't cross. And I'm going to tiptoe a line here, but it's not its not in the way it's generally taken, okay? The Kings are soft. And I don't mean soft like they're not men or they're not tough. I mean, they're just, they're, they're, they're just, uh, um, not graceful is not the word I'm looking for. Uh, um, they're not a hard-nosed team. They, that's not their identity. They don't, well, their only identity is that they lose, but look at the, who's the enforcer on the team. Who's the guy last night? And Kenny Thomas was talking about it after the game with Kyle Draper. Who's the guy that that's going to get in someone's face and not hurt anybody. Who, who's going to, who's going to lay a hard foul out there when they're down 24. Who, who's the guy that's going to be vocal on the bench uh, and, and, and call the players only meeting type of thing. Who are their defenders? Who Who's their stopper? There's no defensive identity. So you can bring Mike Brown in. That's awesome. But that's like that's like taking a, 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 a an old beater car with an old beater engine and thinking if you paint it bright fire engine red, you're going to add 30 miles. There are things a coach can do. There are improvements uh, coaches can do when it comes to system and effort. But at some point, you just you have to look at the roster and go, "What Sabonis going to step in and be a stopper? Right. Uh, is, is Harrison Barnes going to be the guy that should?" And and we always sit here and go, "Well, they can't. We've seen flashes. Well, they can't. They have the capabilities." At some point, you look at Harrison Barnes and you look at pretty much every year in the league, he's a below average defender. Sabonis is a below average defender. Fox, who has been incredible this year, and I'm especially proud of him active on the defensive end you're seeing him pick up 90 feet more and more and just really trying to get in there even the shot where he uh, he jumped past Steph yesterday and then he kind of went back and reached and Steph nailed the three but it's just you can tell he's engaged yeah Kevin Herter gonna break it down they're not a good defensive team because they're not tough there's no toughness um the one thing I find interesting so far, again, three games, too small of a sample size even to do stats, but if I'm going to go to some of them, the interesting thing is going into last night, so now it's only two games before last yeah. night, Kings were 15th defensively, yeah. which is where we would want them to live. Sure. If they could. Even with last night, they drop, I think, to 23rd. Ironically, they score 125 and put the Warriors even below them. So this is a, a championship team that's good, that points have gone up. That's not to defend the Kings. The one question I have, 
I'm not disagreeing with what you said as far as I also wonder, I know that's a very old school way to think like, uh, you know, players have played in the eighties and nineties. Well, where's the hard foul? Who's going to foul? I mean, honestly. So if I'm in that game last night and the Kings are getting run and gave up 89 and I went over there and just floored Steph, like yeah. does, does everybody rally around that? Maybe. I, I, I don't know the they answer might. to that. They might, but they might. Um, the other part is if you're Mike Brown and I, if there's another reason, other than this, to start KZ Akpala, uh, it's for his defense. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. But if you're doing it, commit to it. Commit to it. Mm -hmm. He played him for the first three minutes, and I think this is factually right. Steph hadn't scored. He guarded Steph. In the first three minutes, how much did he play? 334. 334. He didn't play again. Steph goes absolutely crazy in the second quarter. The reason you're playing him is to stop the opposing player's best score. That's right. Then keep playing him. I personally have no problem with him not getting a ton of minutes, but if you're going to commit to him to start, the reason you're doing it is for defensive impact. Why go away from that? Steph Curry scored his three with seven ten left. That's his first points? That's his first. So he did not score with Casey Arpala. Again, I'm not saying Casey Arpala keeps him to 11 points, but that's why you started him, isn't it? That's a hundred percent correct, and it's an excellent point by you. Whether you are, whether you want Keegan Murray to start, right. that, that, that's beside the point. You put Casey Akpala in; he played three minutes, yeah, for, or, almost four minutes. Uh, Keegan Murray played a team high thirty-three. We'll get yeah. to that in a second. But he started, if I'm not mistaken, on Lillard, on Paul George, and on Steph Curry. Yeah, and, and but, barely plays. And, and and your point about Steph Curry in a game in which they gave up a team record, eighty-nine points yeah. in the first half. The only reason you have KZ, but the only reason he's on the team is his defense. It. And guess what? His job was to guard Steph Curry. Well, Steph Curry didn't score. It was very small sample size, right. but he didn't. And, and he, he finished went, with 33. And he had 25 at half. Right. He was killing the Kings by himself. And even when it's starting to get a little out of hand, you're not going to get a ton of offense from KZ no. Paula. But can he stop some of that? Can he stop some of the crazy run that Steph is on? And then the other thing, I feel like, I honestly do feel like they are making an attempt to defend better. Yes. They can't figure out how to do it without fouling. Yes. And then when they stop fouling, they stop defending. So they've got to find that pairing of, okay, look, we're trying to be a little more physical, Psst, whistle. Right. And then you're sending a great free throw shooting team to the line, and you're just getting free points, and you're just racking up fouls. Well, and here's the thing. In the first two games, too, all we talked about is the Kings free throw shooting. Yeah, that was better last night. They outshot the Warriors from yeah. the the Warriors, who have the top yeah. two free throw and shooters Poole in the league. Missed two at one yes. point. Late, they missed yes. a couple. They're leaving this game open. Yes, uh, Pool was yeah three of five. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I mean, you know, Steph Curry makes everything, but the, the 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 point of the matter is, all we did was look at free throw shooting. The Warriors were 72%. The Kings shot 80%. Now, here's the problem. They shot 25% from behind the arc. That's not going to get it done. Yeah, the most consistent thing they've had through three games has been De'Aaron Fox. I think De'Aaron's right. negative has been his turnovers. His positive has been everything else. He's been terrific. He's gotten to the paint. Actually, going into last night, again, two games. He was number two in the league in scoring. Yeah. It actually went down because of his... 25 and 10 know, right um but he was great and he's been really good i think sabonis is needed needs to lift his level of play keegan he, he's great he just fits in he's going to be a really good player and we were saying how quickly he is already the third best player he might, he, might, he might be moving his way on up well to your point on De'Aaron fox he uh, he's doing everything he didn't do at the beginning of last year yes yeah. coming out like a cannon which is what we wanted 31 almost 32 points a game on 60 percent shooting 59.4 45 percent from behind the arc seven assists just under six boards a little over a steal a game the turnovers aren't where you want it to be the free throw shooting isn't what you want it to be but i i can't i cannot find fault with the there's some situational issues i sure. can find fault with them late in the fourth right. quarter yesterday i would have let you know, a little maybe a little less hero ball there but you're also talking about the best player on the team i i can completely forget i mean at that point i'm like super nitpicky yeah I also, and this isn't on you, this isn't about what you said about Sabonis, because I, I think everything you said is is dead on. But I, I, I'm, I'm not enjoying, I get it. Oh, they're 0-3. 
I'm really not. I, I'm I'm kind of sitting back and watching. There there is a large contingent of Kings fans. Like right, Simona said, he's watched. There, Earl's on the chat right now, yeah. for example, saying he and Rashawn Holmes are basically. Exa- People need to not. Guys, don't sleep on Demontis Sabonis. Is still until Fox does it for a full season, the best player on the team. Demontis Sabonis is still a top 25, top 30 player. Now, if he continues down this road, we can have a conversation about that. But for example, last night, what Sabonis have? 19 and 14 with four assists in 22 minutes. He didn't play the end of the third or the fourth. And I get it. Mike Brown had the, you're pulling your guys because it's a blowout. And then the guys on the bench end up coming in and kicking butt and you don't want to screw with it that's fine and don't give me eye test either you're talking about a guy not just a two-time all-star thing but who's 25 26 years old and still had a great year statistically last year demontis Sabonis is going to be fine he's not the issue other than unless you want to talk about the defense but again you don't buy a bunny to uh meow you know, and that's what they did with Sabonis. He's not a defender. Right. Sorry. Right. So, but it, like, all the things you can point out, get off of DeMontis Sabonis. And I think Davion Mitchell might be hurt. We got to talk about that mm-hmm. later. Something's not right with Davion Mitchell. Okay. Uh, we'll, 